NRX Plus in the house. Chris, the Bass Hammer Beeler. Tournament talk, plus a lot more on this edition of Tackle Shop Live, starting right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ma, 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 <laughs> Man, can you believe this? Chris, the bass hammer dealer, is in the house. Yo, oh, I can't believe this. I can't either. I, I'm excited. Freaking awesome. Just happened to come together. The funny thing is, it was like, well, you know, Chris is going to come down and see us. Talk. Yeah, we got we had a little bit of business to talk. For those of you who don't know, this is Chris Bealert here. He is the Northeast what sales manager, correct? For Shimano, yeah, North America company, and he's a, uh, he's a big wig. He's been on house arrest he's for a 14 months due to COVID, and they finally let him come out to play. So the first stop he made was to <laughs> SFT. That's right. This is a long time coming, fellas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Chris, normally what you normally stop in couple times a year oh I mean, yeah it's a pretty long drive for you it's about four hours that's not bad yeah he's up in the northeast yeah Connecticut. yeah so i mean you know it just worked out and then it just happened to be that today today you know show day when he shows up we said well <laughs> you don't have a choice in this you, got, you got him on the pump fake man it's not gonna you be that easy man fake. it's not gonna be that easy so we're gonna we're gonna Tap into some of Chris's knowledge uh, tonight, which we'll get to that a little later on. But. Absolutely, we got we got yeah. the great announcement of the NRX Pluses in, in the house, yeah. and we're going to get with that with uh, Chris here in a little bit. Um, but as always, we got some business to take care of, and that is announcements, and uh, we're going to get going on those. <laughs> okay, so the problem is with the tournament what tournament the big tournament the tournament the, the, well, the, the shimano well tournament, anticipated right? tournament shimano tournament the shimano tournament the susquehanna oh. fish and tackle summer slam sponsored by shimano g loomis jackal and power pro is in full swing right now we are loading this thing up if you guys aren't in it right now, you need to get in it right. I mean, you need to get in it because you might want to. Yeah, it's going to be a great, great tournament. We have, uh, you know, great prizes that we're going to give out. Man, we're giving out eight thousand dollars if it stops at that. But right now, it's eight thousand dollars in cash and prizes going out. Cash, yeah, cash, wow. cash, wow. cash, cash, wow, cash money. Then wow. can, can I get in on that? Yeah, you can. Get in. You know your way around we'll take, on the up, on the upper bank. Yeah, yeah. We'll take your money. I, I see you stuck on a sandbar too. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen you catch them <laughs> with some of them jackal lures. Remember that one distributor show? And I, I can yeah. donate to guys like Corbin. I oh. guess. No, uh, no, oh, no, 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 no. I mean, you, I'll take you for a ride on my boat, Chris. I don't know if you heard me introduce you. It's Chris the Bass Hammer Beaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we sounds know, like a hustle to me. We know about you, bro. Okay. Sounds like a hustle. So. uh that's coming up. We got 76 boats that are pre-registered, and there's probably a couple more that we missed that we're kind of calculating and counting right now. But there's 76 right now. We always load up the last week, so yeah. it's going to be well over 100 boats. It's going to be a really good time. Um, you know, So you definitely want to call us up, go online, stop in the shop, and, uh, and get your stuff and get yourself registered. It's $250 of of uh for guys that don't really know it's 250 dollars for jackal g loomis shimano and power pro anything and that's per team not per person correct so i mean however you guys want to divide it up years ago know. years ago we we me and george had this idea of doing a tournament where um everybody wins you know so um we uh, you know like we like we always do we approach our, our favorite people and we approach shimano through patrick here who's, who's on my left um actually the and, way i remember it was patrick came to a weigh-in and he kind of approached us oh yeah yeah he was like this is cool we got to do said, something this about is cool this. man we got to yeah. try this yeah so um 
we pitched it and Shimano loved it and it just took off and it's really great and everybody wins. You, yeah, you got to buy $250 worth of stuff, but at the end of the tournament, you got $250 worth of stuff. You keep your entry fee. You keep your entry fee. I mean, you got it's a cool. chance to win first place in a $8,000 cash tournament and keep your entry fee. Yeah. I mean, genius. I, I'm not like, yeah. you know, it's awesome. A, a mathematician or anything, but I mean, that's pretty good odds, man. That is. Yeah. I do want to take a minute if if you guys will allow me to have the floor for a minute. Sure. Um, you know, this is the first time where we're we're prior to the event. Um, and we get to say thank you to all the people contributing. Usually it's on stage or yep. or at the weigh-in. Um, but you guys have an unbelievable customer base. Um, Shimano has an unbelievable customer base, and this gives us a chance to say thank you to all of those folks. Oh, right. Um and <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, we have a, a wonderful partnership, and without all those guys entering the tournament, that wouldn't exist. So, uh, oh, greatly right. appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, amen on that. And, yeah. And Chris always, always, constantly telling us about our customers, how great you guys are. He's always just co commenting on it, and 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 the, you know, you guys are why we are allowed to do all this cool stuff. So when we when we come up with something really cool, we throw it by uh, Chris and Patrick. And they want to go with it because yeah. it's you guys are so supportive of this of the brands and uh, and and uh, plus it's a great it's great stuff it's, yeah. <laughs> it's great stuff and, and by the way it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun so by the way it's a lot of fun make sure you get involved with that it's coming May twenty third yep May twenty third is the Regis tournament registration is open until we blast off yep we'll get because we will bring some product with oh, us. even after blast off we signed people up after blast off already yeah we signed a guy up two years ago. Yeah. Uh, an hour after blast off, he had a flat tire, flat tire on his truck on the way to the yep. tournament. Got in late, said, "Can I still fish?" And we said, "Absolutely." And I think he cashed a check. Wow, I, I think he did. I'm yeah. not. I'm not kidding you. I, I, it was. It was the greatest story by ever. himself. Um. So, uh, James Hawk, how you doing, Edward? Uh, how you doing, Ed? Ed was in in today. Uh, ben Buckhunter, always, always uh, here here to watch the show. Antonio, go go Gomez. Oh man, yeah, is watching. go go. Patterson, man. Oh. Patterson, New Jersey, up in the house. Yeah, Kevin Carpenter, how That's you doing? Always, tea, by the always way, a great uh, supporter of the show, huh? That's with one T. Oh, what? Patterson. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. It's P A T E R S O N. Mm. Patterson, second highest. <laughs> Patterson, second, Mike, Mike, second highest waterfall in the U.S. What's the first? Niagara. I thought that was in Canada. You're full of crap. <laughs> oh, did you ever hear of Great Falls? <laughs> oh, is that in Patterson? What about well, Sioux? It's right outside of Patterson? What about oh. Sioux Falls? All right. I'm full of Patterson, New All Jersey right. facts. Mark from Lisa Lake, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Useless knowledge. Uh let's who else is here? Um Mike Bob, how you doing? Yep. Uh St. Cress, how you doing? Randy Holtzman. Uh man, all all kinds of great guys stopping in. Thanks so much for for, for supporting our show. Uh, we're having a ball doing it. I know you guys are love watching it uh, because you always tell us you do. So we appreciate that very much. If um, everybody would stand on their right foot and put their left arm in the air, possibly we'll have enough bandwidth to not darken out yeah. tonight during the show. So yeah, sorry, sorry. Last week we uh, could form a human uh, hey, I'm, antenna here, George. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I can conduct it. I can conduct it. <laughs> okay, I'm that was all Comcast yeah. last week, people. Well, you know, and we and we made some calls to them and raised hell with them, and they said uh, all you got to do is pay the bill. They they did <laughs> they they did some things, so I don't know what that is. Do they but, know who you are? But I guarantee you, <laughs> I guarantee you, it's going to go out again tonight. So when it does, we're going to just circle back around. Hey, where'd, Mike. Where'd you hear that? We're boy, gonna circle back. Mike, boy, I mean, circle you are being around. really, really optimistic. Mike. Joe Gallo in the house. Joe Gallo. No way. Joe, not only do you need an NRX, you also need a Skix. Oh, you musky chasing son of a gun. Yeah. Ah. Oh. And we got a few Skix here for you. Josh Bison. Yeah, I did pay the bill, uh, Ben Buck Hunter. <laughs> I, th and that's what pissed me off. I did pay the bill, and they're not coming through with the goods, okay? So what do you want me to do? All cluster. All right. So anyhow, um, I uh, so I got one more announcement. Um, a guy called me today, um, uh, Mike Bob. He's He got Mike. He has Mike's River Boats up in uh, uh, up on the Juniata. I forget the name of the town. Port Juniata. Royal. Port Royal. And... And he's working with a, a, a organization, nonprofit organization, million dollar club up in Middletown at the Middletown Boat Club, and they're uh, putting together a boat. He's he, you know, he got this old boat. He's building it, 
he did the transom. He got an old motor. He transferred it over. He, he, he's got some things. He's working on this boat. And he's put like three days in it. Um, it's got 35 horsepower on it. And he's going to, and they're going to use it. This organization is going to use this boat for taking inner city kids out and, and from oh, Harrisburg. Really? Fishing, you know, in probably Goldsboro area. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, you know, um, but he's doing it by himself. He's kind of, that's cool. You know, he's, and, and he's reaching out. He's reaching out to everybody and, and, and seeing if, if, whether or not, you guys want to participate by helping donate some stuff to the cause. So he, he's doing um, time, he, you know, he, well, it could be a time, could be time materials. Um, we need some batteries for the boat. We need 12 inch tires for the trailer. Uh, I mean, this thing was like destroyed and, he, and he's building it back together. So okay. spinners, um, he's talking about, oh, and tackle, <laughs> you know, everybody has extra tackle. He needs some tackle, oh, I got, needs some rods, I old got, rods, old reels, kids. you know, yeah. some old tackle bags and stuff. So, He's out there reaching out. I told him I would, I would, I would um, mention it here on the show because we got so many great, great people um, to do that. So what you want to do is go to Mike Bob Facebook page, and you can get all the information on there. Mike Bob Facebook page. Okay. Get all the information on there, or you can call him at 717-348. He told me to put this out there. 717-348-4842. 4842. The so. timing of Mike Bob might be impeccable with having the rod and reel guy on the podcast today. Oops. Yeah. Ah, yeah. might be. Yeah, it might be. So I think it's a great program. So if anybody wants to get involved and, um, you know, we, we're, you know, it's a great thing. We all got a ton of tackle. Yeah. We all got stuff laying around. We all got, well, he, he needs trailer lights. Well, I mean, he's okay. First of all, he's going to take some inner city youth fishing. Well, he's so, not doing it. He's just yeah. getting the, the package together. You know, the tackle needs to be your your terminal, your split shots, your your hooks. Yeah. They're going to be fishing with minnows and worms, well, maybe might, some twister tails and some jig throw, heads. They might throw a swim bait around. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're throwing any eight inch mag drafts or anything <laughs> like that. But oh, I maybe. mean, like, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't know. We get a, a twister tail. Start young. You know, I, some twister tails. I say teach heads. him. I say teach him right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, so, I think it's a great idea. Get if he takes 100 kids fishing this year and three of them stick with it, that's a, and plus the other 100 might gather something out of it that flicks a switch for something. Yeah. There, there needs to be a lot more of of getting not just inner city youth, but youth in general, youth in, in general. In, into fishing, just like we yeah. were when we were kids, right? There's not enough of that that happens. So, any way we can support yeah. someone who's kind of, sticking their neck out there a little bit, right? To be able to do this. First yeah. of all, a, applaud, I mean, yeah. you know, the effort, but yeah, um, I like yeah, it. It's fantastic. I mean, we're all busy. Absolutely. We all like have like three minutes of our time alone in, in our lives. I mean, it's just the way it is. And here's a guy that has the same way and he's taken three days to build this boat well, and do all this other stuff, you know? It's, and it's, there's a lot of that going on, Mike. It's, uh, it's pretty good, you know? There's a lot of that going on. I was watching... Um, uh, some some fishing shows over the weekend um yeah and i saw this show that was saltwater it was a uh, carter uh andrews is that salt yes so love so he's, the obsession of carter andrews the obsession that's, a, that's, that's what a it great was. show so here was i love the, that here show. was the cool thing about that show that kind of goes along with what uh mike bob's doing that he started a program with some of his sponsors and i think mercury was a big one in it where and and this is something that I think we should all do and can do every day. Pick up one piece of plastic trash every time you go fishing, which is not that hard to find. And pick up a piece of plastic trash. Now I know the all of us to fish together. We have yeah. kind of we kind of have a, a a thing where if you if you drag up line and stuff out of the water. You, normally it's a big nasty wad of line and tree limbs and all kinds of we throw it in the you know the the boat and d discard of it afterwards yeah, and you yeah. got that out of the water so i, I really like yeah. what carter yeah andrews is doing with the pick up a piece of plastic thing and i when i when i watched the show i'd heard about this before because he did a emailer i wanted to bring that up so yeah, pick up cool a piece stuff. of plastic please yeah good stuff uh one more thing on the SummerSlam. We sent out an email, and it has some bad information in it. Oops. People who bought stuff prior to May 1st. So it was April 23rd, 
to May 23rd that you're allowed to buy. So don't panic anybody. But prior to May 1st, between May 1st and April 23rd, you guys are in. We had a bad misprint. Yeah, because we always give you a solid month. Yep. Our buy-in is always a solid always a month. Because it takes a month. So that, that, yep. that's all that. Was uh, that you, Mike? Did you, did you type that up? No, I didn't. Oh. That wasn't me. Okay. It looks like uh, Public work. service announcement. Uh, fantasy fishing players, please check your spam or junk email folders for messages from BassMasterFantasy.com because that's the way you have to get notified from. Correct. We don't have individual emails to get a hold of you guys. Okay? Uh, the only way we can reach out to the winners is through fantasy fishing email service. So... It's probably, and everybody's yelling at us because we're not handing out these kits, these prizes. They're like, ah, yeah, these guys. It's often in and, Spain. Uh, oh, there, Josh ha Oshauer has a trolling motor today. D bro, that is exactly what we need. Josh oh, Oshauer. Bob. That's a solid right there, boy. Uh, uh, he has a, a, a used trolling motor. There you go, Mike Bob. We got you one. I know you're watching, Mike. We got you a trolling motor, so here's, there you uh, go. Here's uh, awesome. Ed Rosnowski dropping a, a hundo, a, a Franklin up in the house. Oh, oh. Jeez, there's a hundred dollars for you, bro. You can buy some tires. Um, so great, man. This is awesome. This is going to help out quite Here a bit. We got some trout magnet kits coming in from uh Josh Bryson. Oh, wow, Josh. Thank you, pal. Cuba's up in the house. Oh, Cuba's here. So, uh, all you guys who won prizes from our fantasy league, and we are, are we, you know, we're we got these prizes we're putting together for you. Um, Chris was uh happy. Uh, 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 generous to give us a couple of combos. Mm. Anything you need, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> he just found out about that, I think. <laughs> a few minutes ago. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Welcome back. You know about this. Welcome back. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, you guys, it's in your spam folder. That's what happened. It all went to your spam because fantasy, you know, you get something sent to your work that says fantasy anything ah. on it. You know what I'm saying? A little funky. Mm. Are you talking? It's a little about questionable. Like, uh, you know, you mean Corbin's some... email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It goes right in Corbin. Corbin yeah. gets well, us straight in. Oh, I do, man. <laughs> fantasy fishing, fantasy football, uh -huh. fantasy baseball. Mm -hmm. I, I learned from Patrick, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys are yelling at us. Check your spam, then get a hold of us, and we got these great, great, great prizes for you. And uh, we'll move on from there. Uh, this week's winner. For this tournament's winner from Fantasy Fishing was um, Moosehead721. Mm. Kicked ass is what he did. And uh, he, he won. We got your information, I think. Was that for the Neely Henry? That was for Neely Henry. We do have the information for the Gunnersville tournament. So that was that winner was Randall Switzler. So that was we had two because we missed that one on the on the last broadcast because it was like what right before or right after. They were just starting. And uh yeah, they're just starting. So uh Randall Swifter uh Switzer run uh Gunnersville and Moosehead are Switz Oh, that is that is Switzer. Oh. Gunnersville. Oh, this is Gunnersville. Gunnersville's coming up. No, that oh, was the okay, one. I get it. That was Scratch at back up. Let's let's check it. Let's check it again. Can we start this segment over? Uh the this winner for um <laughs> Okay. The Gunnersville or uh, the winners, the winner for Stop the, saying the, last, Gunnersville. the last tournament, Neely Henry was Randall Switzer. There you go. You won Neely Henry. And I, he earned that one, by the way. Put, that was why, a tough why one would he put that under Gunnersville? Because he says uh, next event Gunnersville. Uh, I don't read that far. I see yeah, Gunnersville. I know. This. I'm paraphrasing. Brian. Come on, Brian. Maybe you know, fantasy you, you know who you're dealing with here. You need to, you need to tighten it up a little bit there, Brian. <laughs> okay. We're moving on to our favorite topic, and that one is tournament talk. Oh, yeah. I know. You know what I thought, George? Uh -uh. I thought that maybe we should do that after. Tournament talk later? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Because everybody's excited. Yeah, everybody's. So oh, excited. you're talking. Everybody is so excited oh, right now. I'm so excited. Hold up. Patrick's Hold up. prioritizing the agenda. I get this. 
We are going to go down a road, ladies and gentlemen, that you just don't go down every day. And that is the new Look at that candy cane. G Loomis NRX Plus that was just released and we got the mother load. And uh man, what what a beautiful, beautiful rod. Uh Chris. Where, Let me get them, boys. What what how did this come about? I mean, I mean, NRX, why would you screw with the greatest rod of all time, the G Loomis NRX? I don't get it. So one of the things that that makes G Loomis and Shimano, um, in fact, this is 25 years since Shimano purchased G Loomis this Has year. Has it been that long? 25 years. Oh my gosh. And this is 11 years I'm since old now. 11 years since original NRX launched. Wow. So in true Shimano and G Loomis fashion, we always attempt to raise the bar. So NRX, just like you said, Mike, for, for most anglers, it's the greatest fishing rod that they've ever held in their hands. Um, and as many will see, we were able to up the ante a little bit there. I couldn't uh, believe it when you popped them out of them bag. Well, Patrick was like salivating when the boxes came in and uh, we had to throw the boxes away because they're ruined. I can't use them for shipping now. <laughs> and uh, uh, thanks, Patrick. But there, because we were so excited, and and the first thing we want to do is pick it up and feel it and make sure that it was something special. And I even said to you, didn't I? You did. I, I said, you don't want to piss off a lot of NRX people, man, because this is if you're going to mess with something that's great, it better be freaking badass. And you definitely did that. One of the greatest things about the partnership between Shimano and G Loomis um, is the sharing of technology. Mm -hmm. And when you have two iconic brands that merge knowledge and technology you get a product like nrx plus take it out to that camera sure. just give it a so the new nrx plus is is um you know obviously a collaboration if you will mm -hmm. um it's the first bass series that has our spiral x proprietary shimano technology where we utilize inch and a half wide carbon tape um, on the inside of the blank we then use traditional rolled sheeted material for the next layer and then we use the inch and a half wide carbon tape on the outside. Um, this makes the rod much stronger, also much lighter, which as George will attest to, um, these are even lighter than previous NRX by quite a bit because of that technology. So Chris, does the, yeah. uh, does the sensitivity factor change from going from the graphite to the spiral X and all that stuff? I mean, I, I fish conquest, I fish, you know, the, OG NRX and maybe you can go in and kind of tell us a little bit of difference between, you know, how the new NRX plus differs from conquest and, you know, cause you're the man, dude. It's, it's actually, so NRX plus is going to be, um, a, a lighter, thinner, it is and, and more sensitive material. Okay. Um, additionally, there's a brand new real seat. If you take a peek at, um, some of the real seats on these rods, you'll see that it's a Shimano CI four plus. So that's real, the one you see seat. on like, uh, um, is that the one on uh, Janus? X Pride and similar, similar, yep. like like it's the same material. Correct. Not only is it is it ergonomically much more comfortable in your hand, but additionally, um, because of the carbon interfusion, it's very rigid, so it transmits that vibration from sure. the blank okay. to your hand much sure. better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you get a more sensitive product. Um, okay. And and always it's, you know, sensitivity is about the entire package, not just the blank itself. Mm -hmm. um, the guy train also has a lot to do with that as well. So um, back when we built original NRX, we had um, a hybrid guide train where we used traditional Fuji um, guide train. And then we went to recoil, titanium yeah. recoils um, and had a hybrid guide train. Yeah. That was so successful in the performance and the weight factor. Um, we adopted it to new NRX plus. So it has okay. Fuji SIC guide train. Awesome. And mm -hmm. then we go to the REC or rec recoils, mm -hmm. um, as you can see. And Super then, strong. Yep. And Very we, durable. And what? then back to the tip top of titanium frame SIC as well. Yep. So that, I mean, that's what you're getting with that guide is, 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 a, and also a lot less breakage, you Correct. know, is where you can get away from that. And, the, and the, those, those guides at the top are the, where you see a lot of that breakage. Well, you don't have it anymore. Correct. And that was great, man. That was yeah, just, I mean, I'm glad it kept, you kept it. And, yeah. and, um, and because I, we, we love it. The interesting thing about it is, is, is Mike and I have, um, a pretty good NRX collection that goes back to day one. Yeah. And, uh, we've probably rewrapped and repaired more than a anybody. dozen guides more than anybody in the world that pretty sure of that mostly are due to Mike. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm not, hey. But I'm not going to deny that. But here's the yep. point I want to make. I fish hard, Chris. Here's the point I want to make. I know you do. I've seen it. I know. Never <laughs> broke a recoil guide. Yeah. Now, and, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, we've broken at least a Everything. dozen guides on these rods. <laughs> yeah. Um, and... And when you, you know, guys, when you, the, when they come in and buy them every now and then we get a little frisky and we take one and smash it down to the blank so you can well, see how it comes yeah. back. We don't like to do that with a $650 rod or whatever they are, but right. it's, it's, you know, but that's what it does. It's, it's, it's durable, right, George? It's very durable. Yeah. Very durable. It's durable. Um, the other thing that I found out that's, um, the other thing I found out that about NRX is the, it, from a strength perspective, I mean, we've literally taken NRX and done things like uh, an 852 spinning rod and go striper fishing for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes. With one ounce jigs and five inch swim baits and catching stripers all weekend. They're, they're not supposed to be, that's not supposed to happen. No. no remember that one that Mike but caught they're last very year? strong. 30, yeah. In, in the they're very strong. It was, it was a giant. Like, yeah. It was like, yeah. it was a giant. It was like 30. That's what I do. Inches. Mike's like, it's what I do. He's got this NRX. It's like bet in half. And Mike, he's like, <laughs> oh, <giant. laughs> I did. It was, a 30, it was on. It was a 31 inch or on an 852, 15 pound braid with a 25 pound test leader. And like pulling on those AJs in South Carolina. And it was crazy. Ooh. Dude, I want to take an 852 for an AJ. <laughs> I think, I think, I think it'll do it. No doubt. <laughs> that might not work. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that, we have a, we have a really funny. interesting question here from uh, Michael Loisel. Lazelli, Lazella, sorry about that. Terrible at that. What is the best NRX plus for casting for jigs, pitching, and flipping? Um, I, I would say my opinion on that, take the flipping out of the occasion and, and just for pitching a jig, uh, 854 all day long. Me, no argument out of me on that I'm, one. I'm 854 all day. I know, I know some of you guys like a longer rod for that, uh, but I'm 854 all day. Let's long. back up a little bit because yeah. if uh, if this gentleman is using a you know quarter to half ounce, 853, he may want an 853, true, rather than the 854. You know, if you're a half ounce to three quarter and maybe up to an ounce, you want to have that four power. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I look at I look at it like a lot with I and I and I fished the 853 and the 854 a bunch. Um, if I'm finesse jigging with a 15 pound fluorocarbon, I use an 853. If I'm jerking on them with a heavier, a heavier line and heavier cover, I go 854. And kind of to Chris's point, I would say on my 854, I probably fish a half ounce jig more than anything. And on my 853, I probably fish a five sixteenths to oh, three eighths. Um, I like that green fish tackle itty bitty on an 853. Oh yeah, it might be for the for the question that it's casting model jig, so it might be that the 853 is a little, a little better choice. Uh, for the casting model, no, the, the flipping side of it. what casting model oh. for jigs oh, 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 and okay. and let's it, it, gotcha. since he threw the flipping breeze yeah. in there, yeah. right? Then the yeah. four power is the power. right one, right? Yeah, even if it's a little yeah. bit short, it's going to have the right power. So the graphite in the NRX plus. Mm -hmm. explain that build did you i mean i know you did but can you explain it again there's a couple questions sure, on there because because they're like explain nrx plus what is it? what's so, the, what's the plus yeah yeah so nrx plus because it is it is a merging of technologies it is spiral x okay and spiral x is is shimano technology that now we're using in Miss blanks we did it previously in conquest as corbin yeah. um, and, and, by, and by the way you said that they're being built where Woodland, Washington, USA. So they they brought the oh, machines yeah. over. Correct. That through the Spiral X. Correct. And they put them in that in, in the greatest rod building shop in the world. Correct. So look at that. Wow, that's crazy. And that's that's kind of the the. I wonder what the shipping tag was with that, George. <laughs> I don't think UPS brought them over, no. George. I wonder if that got caught in the Suez Canal when you were on that <laughs> rant earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, George is like, oh, the little Schmitties are tied to Suez Canal. <laughs> Two weeks later, the Vanfords are tied to Suez Canal. The Rod saying, man. the NRX Plus. Not the, the NRX Suez Plus. Canal. <laughs> so, so, so you got Spiral yeah. X Graphite. So, so it's a gas shortage. So let's back up a second because yeah. I want to I wanna, I wanna also come, uh, comment on um, the actions. Uh, arguably, we have the greatest rod designer who's ever walked oh, absolutely. the planet um, in Steve Ray Jeff. Yeah. And an unbelievable engineering team. We call him Rad Jeff here in Lancaster. Unbelievable engineering team uh, in Woodland that that 
create these fantastic actions. Um, and the way that Spiralex is actually constructed. So just imagine if you have a, a roll of tape, if you will, a roll of electrical tape, mm. and it's an, an inch and a half wide. Well, that's the carbon that starts the blank. Mm -hmm. That carbon tape is rolled. Pretend this is a mandrel. It's basically rolled up that mandrel yep. from butt to tip. Okay. We then take a sheet of material, like a traditional rod blank, is sheets, what we call longitudinal sheets of material, and it goes over that carbon tape wrap. The third wrap is the carbon tape again in the opposite direction. Okay. Which, which gives you the X create. It creates that spiral X. Yeah. It's, it's, and spiral X allows your rod to bend truly. So spiral and without, X, without flat spots. Correct. So what happens with a rod, a rod is round, right? So when a rod is round and it bends, it ovalizes, right? Right. So the best, one of the things, one of the, the, the great features of spiral X is when that rod starts to ovalize spiral X actually pushes back against that ovalization making the rod much stronger and truer. Now, it also does a couple of other things along the way. It eliminates what's called blank twist. So if you took a, a traditional mm -hmm. rod and you grab the, the tip top, you can rotate that blank by, right. with your fingers. You can see very little movement with my fingers on the spiral X blank. Yeah, right. Because the blank does not twist because of that technology. Right. Now, what that means to, as an angler is when you're going to make a cast, for example, your back cast, everybody has a really aggressive back cast, and then you want to come mm -hmm. forward and, and make your cast. Well, on the back cast, that blank will rotate in one direction. Mm -hmm. Well, then it's got to unload. Right. So uh, when you come forward, if it unloads the wrong way, right, you're going to get an inaccurate cast. Everybody right. thinks, well, that's your, I'm doing that. It's, it's my, well, your rod isn't enabling you to make a more accurate cast either. So those are just kind of a couple of things that, that Spiral X does. Um, additionally, like when you're pulling on a fish, for example, let's say we've got this rod loaded up and we want to get a four pound small moth hooked up and we want to turn his head and move him away from a rock. Mm -hmm. Well, a normal rod under that load will rotate and you won't get the leverage that you need to be able to turn that small moth away from that rock. So, Spiral X does not rotate. So you, you, you got much more power. You've you got more direct contact, which gives you more leverage. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, you know, we could, it, it, the greatest thing about this technology is um, it enables the angler to do more with the tool, if you will. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. You got, you got crazy, you got crazy sensitivity. It's amazing. You have crazy so, lightweight. You have crazy strength. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I really like about NRX Plus is when they brought out the um, selection you know, they went and added back in, in some cases and expanded in other cases. So, you know, old school G Loomis guys like myself and many of you out there MBR started on SJR and MBR yep, SJR mag, mag bass rods and spin jig rods, yep. which were traditional fast tapered rods. And the first rod that I held today was the, uh, uh SJR 782, 782. <laughs> no, it was like 842. It was like was the first one I held. It was like a walk down memory lane. It was like, my God, this thing is unbelievable. And I look at the number, I'm like, oh. So the interesting, you didn't. <laughs> the interesting thing there is, is they're all fast tapered rods. So yeah, you know, obviously, 10, 12, 13, 14 years ago, extra fast became a big deal, and Huge, yeah. you know, NRX was all about extra fast rods. Now they did have some MBRs at one point, but they. They took them out because that particular way that that rod blank was being made didn't really suit MB, uh, fast fast tapers. It was all about extra fast. So now we have all the MBRs back, the 843s, the 844s, arguably two of the greatest rods. I see a question here from Mike Barr. What about throwing a chatterbait? Well, G. Lewis makes a wonderful chatterbait rod, but I will challenge a little bit and say the 843 and the 844 – yeah. All you ever need in the world of chatterbaits. I, I think the 843 is probably, well, in my opinion, um, I'm, a, I'm a little biased, but in my opinion, I think the 843 is what all medium heavy rods are measured against. Absolutely. Um, it, yeah. It's arguably the, the most versatile action uh, on the planet. And uh, it's a Swiss army knife. You yeah. can pretty much do everything with it. Well, you, yeah. I mean, it's a Swiss army knife. Um, 
and I know you listen to our show, but many times <laughs> on our show, many times on our show, we talk about that rod, that rod, the MBR eight forty three as the baddest ass rod ever built. I mean, I'm not kidding. You. you can do like guys, you know, you can do anything with that thing. Yeah, it's so versatile. So, and 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 that's that's my point here. This is my point. There's actions, and there's tapers, and there's all this stuff that that are in these rods that you know uh a lot of people say wow it's so expensive it's so expensive it's such expensive rod but these are rods that you buy one time and you have them forever i mean they're they're the best rod you're ever going to fish it's it's when you look at how much you're going to use it it's really not that expensive and they fish like unbelievable you know you're you're fishing the 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 best in your hand and they got a, a, a tremendous warranty lifetime warranty a lifetime warranty that stands behind it so also a, you also have a kicker in there for accidental breakage correct we definitely have uh you know an expediter process expediter. as well yeah if you so, make a mistake which we all do yeah you know, we're still well, here to help so, you. so actually i think that's how i broke every product. yeah absolutely you don't just break them i mean most of, you know most guys we we know how we, break I know how I we break step them. on them uh car doors little mean kids that kind of thing um but don't forget screen doors and screen doors yeah but um the rod is for your life. I mean, so the, we got the warranty to back it up. So you pay, pay that money. You have you have the greatest rod in your hand. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can fish it forever. And, and you're always going to be on top. I want to add to that, Mike. So when GLX came out in the mid to uh, late 90s, you know, there was a lot of talk about, oh, you can't, you know, you can't use that kind of graphite to make a rod. They're going to be too brittle. They're going to break, blah, blah, blah. Well, the warranty was there. I don't believe Expediter existed back then, but here's the deal. None of that was true. They didn't break. No, can't that break those rods. So what I keep that's, in the store here. the other greatest rod in the world. To go along with what Mike was saying, uh, and, and this is for every high-end rod in the world. I mean, every rod company builds a high-end rod. For sure. Yep. This is for every rod, high-end rod in the world. So I keep a I keep an original GLX in the store here. That was 300 and something dollars in the mid-90s. I mean, people wow. are losing their freaking minds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, here's here's the deal. Crazy. The rod is still relevant today. I fish it. It's a 783 MBR with an old Weibel reel seat. Mm -hmm. It's still relevant today. We talk about that one all the time. So yep. 350 divided by how many years? So I fished. I fished with the best for all those years and it's still relevant james today. hawk so i mean that's kind of the way i look at the price of everybody's high end james the what the write rod. this down get your pen paper out jerk recording devices electronic devices J james is looking for a uh the best jerk there's only rod. one mbr 783c and I'm happy to announce it's now available in NRX Plus. <laughs> you can also buy it in GLX, IMX, GL3, I mean, uh, E6X. E6X. I recommend all the series yeah. in that rod for jerkbait fishing. Telling you, we, it is the best. We've done many shows on jerkbait fishing, and we always talk about that rod because it is yep. the baddest ass jerkbait rod you're ever going to use. It is bad to the freaking bone. Just saying. 10-pound well, test, high seas, fluorocarbon, well, and a metanium on there, and life is good. Well, and if you guys aren't a Loomis guy, that 610 medium Shimano Zodius isn't a bad option. I use them all. That's a good one, too, Corbin. And and, and, and X Pride. Yeah. I, I use them all, man. I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got one. I've got a GLX that I yeah. use a lot. I got Zodius. I mean, it's kind of like you walk into, you walk into, you know, SFT, and you're just like, oh, I mean. I'm going to feel all three of them and I'm going to pick what I want, which well, what's nice is I'm going to use it for what's nice is you can come into the shop here. Yeah. You can pick up the 783, yep. flick it on the ceiling and say, oh, that's what they're talking about. Then you can go to your. To yep. another rod and like like the Shimano Zodius yep. or you can go to, uh, you know, the Poison Adrena or you can go to the X Pride and kind of get something close to it in that in that action. Let's yeah. not leave some of the entry level guys out of here, too, because, yeah. you know, not everybody has five, six, seven hundred dollars to spend on a fishing right. rod, right? So the greatest thing about Shimano is we can talk about an SLX, we can talk about an Intenza, and you're going to have very Intenza. similar actions right, yeah. at, at a range of price points, and they're going to be phenomenal tools for you to fish with. Well, I think the greatest thing that Shimano ever did was purchase G Loomis because it it their rods <laughs> pre pre uh, pre G Loomis days were 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 you know 
a little bit to talk about, you know, they, 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 <laughs> 25 they, years. They, so in 25 years, they switched it around and it was the greatest purchase they ever did because now they have, they married that technology together that you can find all the way down to, you know, an SLX series, uh, um, which is a great series, by the way, bro. Yeah. I mean, we absolutely love that series of rods. What about the Claris? At seventy nine dollars. Claris is great, but the oh. I, honestly, that for the bass guy that you know that we're that we're talking about right now, I think for ninety nine dollars, anybody can afford it, and it's a rod that when you fish it, yes. you're going to get something out of it. Yes, it's going to be like oh, it's not holding you back with your learning curve. You You'd, know what yeah. I mean? You'd never if you put a, an SLX combo, SLX casting reel. And yeah. a convention rod in someone's hand, and you told them what it would cost, they would call you a liar. Two hundred bucks, right. and yeah. and Chris makes a really yeah. really big point about the tapers being the same, you know, in the lower entry level ones all the way up to the top. I mean, that's that's huge because, um, I mean, yeah, you, you get more sensitivity, you get a little bit light, the lighter weight, the more you go up, but still, you get that crisp action, that crisp taper, which I mean, is really important when you're working a bait, especially like a jerk bait or anything like that. Makes you a better fisherman. It does. It this does. equipment makes you a better fisherman. Yeah. It really does. And, and, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we're not biased by any means Shimano um, because there's other companies out there that do great stuff. I might be. Yeah. <laughs> me, me too. But Shimano <laughs> has always led the way with, with some of this technology and they've always opened the envelope and pushed the envelope. And here's just another, another example of Shimano pushing the envelope we do have the conquest, which is unbelievable spiral spiral gra uh, X graphite, but this is different. It's it's uh, there's a fellow here that has four to conquest, which are great rods. We love them. Me, me and George have two ourselves, but this is different. It's lighter. It's uh, it feels the balance is different on it. It's a totally different feel to it. And it has that extra fast taper. So, it you know, it yeah. doesn't just have an MBR slower, fast. So, taper, the, so the point is when you guys do yeah. a, a makeover on some of this stuff and we and and you know we're like oh, don't touch something that's so great it's well thought out this, this it has to be it, first of all it has to be because um all all the consumers out there all the anglers yeah they know yeah right you can't fool anybody because just like us if, if you put it in our hands we're going to know the difference they're the same way so if it's not then they're going to call you out and uh it's just not the way we do things. Just like if we redesign a reel, um, you know, Corrado K is better than Corrado I and, and so on. So the reels, the rods across the board for all of our brands, it's always about upping the ante. It's about creating, um, you know, a better tool, a more versatile tool in some tool in some situations. Maybe it's a lighter one. Maybe it's more sensitive and so on. But yeah. there's always improvements. Speaking of that, and we talked about these a lot. The Vanford? No, well, not only Over that, the CF4. not only that, but the MGL, the yeah. uh, 70, 70 yeah. MGL and the 71 MGL Corrado and the SLX. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy that you're putting out a product like that out, you know, for that kind of money with MGL in it and how much of a difference that makes. MGL spool is, is uh, if you've ever cast one or if you've never cast one, please come by to Susquehanna and, and go cast, cast one, one in the parking lot. Yeah. You'll see the difference. It, it, it's there's such a substantial difference in, you know, the way that spool performs compared to, to everything else out there. I'm yeah. telling you, it's, it's quick. It's unbelievable. Very quick. Mike, a question that we get asked a ton and, and, uh, it, it kind of goes with this rod conversation and, we, and we've explained it before, but we talk about taper mm -hmm. and power and action yeah and everybody is it's like one of my pet peeves is when a pro talks about structure meaning cover yeah like he talks about a, a brush pile on a point and calls the brush pile structure the point is the structure the brush pile is the cover you're a pro <laughs> let's get it right so Arsh. with that being said well you know we like to make, taper like to, uh, educate Taper, action, and power are not the same thing. So power, um, and, and, and a lot of people ask this question, so I know it's relevant. Power is the quote-unquote range that the rod handles. So when you cast a rod, it takes a certain amount of weight to flex the rod, to load it up. Deflection. And to fire it off, which is like a catapult. It takes a certain amount of weight to bend that rod. 
then there's a maximum amount of weight that that rod can handle. That doesn't mean if your rod's rated to three quarters of an ounce and you put a one ounce weight on there and cast it, it's going to break in half. But it does mean if you're like consistently double hand, Paul Bunyan power chop casting with the rod with a one ounce weight <laughs> and it breaks, don't act surprised. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all, but it's also a performance stuff. rating, right? So the rod overloaded isn't going to perform as if it was sure. properly loaded. Sure. True. So that's your... So that's power. That's power. So, so what's we paper? refer to power as medium light, yeah. medium, medium heavy, heavy, Ul ultra cetera. light. So, so what's, what's taper? So taper is how the rod bends. And so people so, call this, you know what they call this? What do they call this? The tip. The tip. Oh. Just the tip. No, speed. They call this they sensitivity. Call this the, they call this sensitivity. Sensitivity. How sensitive is this? How rod? sensitive is the rod? Meaning, you know, how, how, how how light is the how light does the flex of the tip? So this is not what so sensitivity at, is. And I think Nick's got a pretty good uh, yeah focus he, on yeah this. You, you got it. And so if, the, this if guys are online right now and you want to look there. There's actually charts on our websites, both G they're Lumis good or Fish Shimano. You can see rod charts just like George is describing now. So you can showing you can, the flex. Correct, showing power. And action. Oh, yeah. So this rod here. You got it, bro. Just do can it. Can you see this now? Yeah, we can see it. Look at it. Right there so, it is. It's beautiful. This rod. So right here on this rod is three guides down from the tip. One, two, three. And you'll notice at that third guide, this rod really rolls over. So this is an extra fast taper. taper. Okay. Now we're going to go... Not to the total opposite end of the spectrum, but we're going to go, because we're not going to go through every taper of rod. This is a old school SJR 782, which is a fast taper. And so what was this one? This is an extra fast. Extra this is fast. an 803 yeah. uh, jig and worm rod, which is extra yeah, fast. Extra so fast. this, now this is a fast taper. And the interesting thing about fast tapers is the lighter the rod, a little farther down it'll flex. The, the the hinge point, if you will, which some so, people would call slower. Yeah, slower. Depending so on your slower. terminology, what or you would call more this what, sensitive. 80, 20? Yes. So extra fast is eighty twenty. This would be what seventy thirty, ideally. So here we are. The tip. One, two, three guides. Now, the extra fast rod rolled over here. Watch this. This rod is kind of like coming down right in here. So four guides yep. Definitely. is where it starts to really break over. So this is a, a true fast. Now, yep. why is that important to you? So as you get more extra fast, you get more specific. As you go more towards fast, you get more multi-purpose. Now, a crankbait rod would be moderate, which would flex way back into here. Oh, George. Okay. George. It just so happens that I grabbed an SLX crankbait rod. So a crankbait rod is moderate. So it's just a big continuing arc. All the way down into here. There's not really a, a transition into a, a hard rollover. And that is what we call moderate. And so, you know, this is one end of the spectrum. Extra fast is the other end of the spectrum. Fast is in the middle. Does that mean you can't use an extra fast rod to throw a spinner bait? No, that's not against the law. And you may you may like that. As a matter of fact, I was looking at um, Todd Auten's uh, tackle that he used at the Neely Henry tournament. And I don't believe Todd Auten is sponsored by G Loomis, but he was all IMX pro. And he was jigging worm rods on his chatter bait. Oh. Excuse me. Hmm. Lately, but, that's that's not yeah. allowed. The rod has to be soft. And it has slow. to be. It has to be glass, or it has to be a fast tapered graphite. Well, you know, top five finish for Todd Auten throwing a jig and worm rod. So, like at the end of the day, this is for your knowledge on purchasing a rod and yep. making a decision and answering your questions that you asked yes. us about power and taper. Yep. Does that mean that you can't fish a chatterbait well on an extra? No. Yeah. That matter of fact, you might prefer that. It's just a. It's, it's no wrong answer is, to that one. This Personal is what preference. it is. This is what it is. So, so one of the things that I'm seeing here is, you know, 
wh where what would you spend your money on? You know, if 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 this is a question we get quite a lot, would you spend your money on a rod or would you spend your money on the reel? That's a great question because I know where I would go with it. Let's go down the line here. Corbin, what do, what, what would you do? Rod. Rod all day. Why the rod? Uh, because when you go, and it, I think ultimately the question is, when you say spend money, money would have to be defined. So if you have. If you're uh, going to. No, I mean. Like if so you're say you're going to spend a lot of money. buying it, like an NRX yeah. or a Stella, you know, two, two high-end things. I'm going to buy an NRX because sensitivity is something to me that's worth paying for. Um, you know, if I buy a casting rod, I can put an SLX MGL, I can put a Corrado MGL, I can put a Bantam, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what you want, a Corrado K, I mean, that's a staple reel, just same thing with a spinning rod, a Vanford's a heck of a spinning reel, you know, I mean, but to me, there's a huge difference between fishing a Zodius for $200 or fishing an NRX for 525 to yeah. 600 and to Feel me, it. rod all day long. What are you doing, Beeler? So uh, I'm, I've always been a middle of the road guy. Like I'm going to split it. I'm going to get what I feel is the best value in a reel. And I'm going to get the best tool in a rod for the application I'm buying it for. So I'm going to try and spend my money equally as possible. Um, and it's easy to shift from one to the other, depending on what you're, you're attempting to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's usually where I'd go. I'd, I'd try and look for the best value in the best application for where I'm going to spend. It. That's interesting. Yeah, that's, that's really, really interesting. interesting. I forget who it was, Mike. Speaking of on this topic, I had a guy, I, I can't remember who the person was, but they found, remember, they, they, it was like they caught an ugly stick with a Shimano Stella on it. And it's like, I remember seeing that pic. I mean, that's like, you got a, a $50 rod at best. I lost a, that. We're, with, we're a, with, a, with a $700 reel. I mean, like, I never called me. That's a little that, lopsided. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, my, my theory is I like to buy one really good outfit per year as per my earlier discussion <laughs> i'm still fishing a 1995 glx i was six years old so you know spending that plunking that money down now real wise for example let's talk about a casting reel you know i'm gonna go more money on the rod and then go to like a corrado which i call a 15 year reel i mean if you get 15 years out of your corrado you're you're gonna not only you're gonna be happy, you're gonna want to buy a new reel by then. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. I'm curious how many guys out there watching um have a Corrado B, which is the original green yeah. Corrado two hundred B. All of them. I guarantee you this will light this will light up in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Because that, that to George's point, that's exactly what you're saying right there. And we know that the audience is loaded with guys that still fish that car. Well, I mean, oh, and, and again, yeah. looking at the Elite series, I mean uh Steve um Kennedy. His deck's full of them. He fishes all old school greenies, and that's what he calls them, greenies. So he likes them. They last forever. They're extremely well built, um, and they have a strong following. So that makes my point. A hundred. They were one nineteen back in the day. Yeah, the super yeah. free was one thirty nine. Yeah. If you got so you know, free. today you're spending one hundred and eighty dollars on a Curado. It's a great buy, and you're going to fish it for it really a is. long time. So I mean, you know. Spend a little more money on the rod, but kind of embrace that concept a little bit of this. If you're going to buy like one really good combo a year yeah, and have them forever, or are you looking for more of a multi-purpose package? Well, you know, it's there too. I only got one thing to say. Oh. You got to feel them to reel them. Yeah. How oh. about that? I knew that was coming. I knew you were going to say that. Oh, my oh. God. That's why Mikey takes his 852 striper fishing. I mean, it's not like when you're jigging a, I, I a jig for a striper that you don't feel him go, whoa. I mean, Mikey, he's, he's down there. He's feeling the sand crabs. He's feeling the sand. Flip. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh, man, <laughs> that's one of them. They're killing fish. Oh, my <laughs> I mean, he's got to feel him to reel him, man. That's right. You got to feel him to reel him. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, I've sold a million rods over the years to our great customers. And, uh, you know, you, and everybody has their budget and we are very, very budget conscious in here. We, we, you know, we're not going to, you know, sell you over what you really want because we want you to be happy and love your, 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 your combo that you walk out of here with. So what I'm saying is you can do that in every budget range. Yes. Out there. Yeah. 
You can buy the best rod and reel in a budget out there, especially now, more so than ever before, because these graphites are crazy. These rods are nuts. They're crazy. The SLX is off the charts. So you can do these great, you know, so just pick your budget, know your budget, what your best, you know, when you're, when you need to feel them to reel them, pick your best budget that you can do. And you come in and you buy that, that highest budget, whatever it is. So me and George will sell you a rod that you will be completely happy with. It's going to expand your fishing knowledge. But I'm telling you right now, these NRX, new NRX rods yeah. are going to break my bank. So Oops. one of one of the things that we didn't address here in this conversation about about action and and you know what what product for for the consumer what they want to buy um, we need to talk about independent fishing tackle retailers like Susquehanna Bait and Tackle who can do exactly what you guys di just did because your expertise yeah. in fishing is is unparalleled. The reason they come in the door at Susquehanna is because you guys can get them in the right product for the budget that they have. Simple as that. Yeah. And that can't be understated. You guys do a wonderful Appreciate job. You've that. got a great customer following because of that. But you guys are sticks too, man. You, you can catch them and you know what the rods and reels do and, and how they apply. So I, that's I, everything. I've hurt some feelings in my day. <laughs> Definitely done that. Steady there, fella. <laughs> Well, you know, I appreciate those words, uh, Chris, because me and George, we worked very, 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 uh, very hard on that. So that's something that we do here at Susquehanna Fish and Tackle. We try to get our employees to to understand that, and they they research and they do the best they can, also. And yes, they do. Um, and they, you know, and that's what we do. We, you know, well, we're all fish heads. We are. Yeah. We're, we're we're all fish heads. We we're all live together. this stuff. We live it. All right. So every second that we're not working, we're fishing. Yep. We're running long here on this, I know. We did, but uh, you know, we just want to. We trapped Chris, and we told him we wanted to. We 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 asked Chris if he would do like ten minutes on the show. We're gonna keep him for the whole show. Well, you're in. You're uh, in. Now, I mean, bro. he doesn't have anywhere to go. I'm in. He's I can trapped. tell you this much: he's gonna have to take him headphones off himself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's transition. Let's say. So let's, let's go. Move hey, on. listen. This is now. Wait a minute! I didn't get any baits to show. Oh, oh, you can. Oh, you got okay. a whole shop full. Wait, wait, wait. Keep your headphones on. Take That's your his, pick. This is his escape strategy. Now we are going to go to the most exciting part of our show, See? and that is tournament talk. Yeah, gotcha. baby. Gotcha on that one. Yeah. At least that's how I feel about he it. He is charged. Every show, we always talk about the latest tournament, and George was right on it again, walking around with that thing taped to his face taped to his yeah. arm we, he walks around like this all day long so yeah. he needs to get like a selfie stick you know so it, yeah make sure he doesn't it is great man it's no i need both hands full to pull them orders for everybody it's yeah. very exciting and like me and george always said we use these tournaments not just as uh, in, in, in enjoyment which we enjoy but as a learning tool. absolutely it's a learning tool for the time absolutely. of the year that we're in and um today we're not going to so much get into a topic as we are going to kind of morph off of what's going on on these tur these on this tournament what we learned and what we learned about it and it'll morph into a great conversation about what's going on I, so I, how I, was it george what I was this all about i couldn't agree more i i think and i've said this on here many times i think if you pay attention to the elite series if you pay attention to um i'm not sure what it's called the the bass pro tour Bass Pro Tour. If George, you Pro Circuit. You, you finally circuit. got it. You Bass finally got it right. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> Bass Pro it's, it's Tour. It's confusing. Yeah. Weigh, weigh them all, whatever. But if you pay attention to these guys, you're seeing the best of the best. Now, keep in mind, on the Bass Pro Tour, they have one and a half days of practice. One and a half days of practice. And they may be on a lake that is something that would take us a years to fish and they're all trying to beat wheeler in one and a half days <laughs> they've got to dissect that so, body so, of water so you, in yeah well in short amazing. order and Maybe. beat wheeler yeah, so you know to me you know you're learning from the 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 pre-fishing strategies and then you're learning from a lot of times the tournament is something that evolves 
Yeah. So the days of like going out and finding your, your school of fish and then tying up all your baits that you caught them on and going out to the tournament, those days are all over. That never happens. If you're a tournament fisherman, your pre-fish is to give you some ideas of where to start. You, you'll never fish, maybe a one day tournament. You'll never fish a multiple day tournament. I shouldn't say never, but pretty much will never fish a multiple day. Tournament You're pretty lucky if you did <laughs> and do what you found in practice. So <clears throat> to me, the, the greatest, one of the greatest lessons I've ever learned from these guys is they're adapting during the tournament. So Neely Henry was the absolute epitome of that. The elite series at Neely Henry, which we were going to start reporting on last week, but the, they postponed it. <laughs> yeah. I, I knew that had yeah. to come out. I know that George is still a little chapped there. Yeah, I wasn't. He was, was, man. He was I like, mean, tell right, right. Yeah, no, that, what? I, what I are mean, you doing? That messed, up his, know, that messed up his Monday shipping day, man. He's like, man, now I got to watch live. Yeah, I don't know. I don't I know, mean, man. I, I, I mean, I don't think there would have been a big difference between Thursday and Friday. I mean, there was still a ton of water in the top end of the lake. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, and the bottom end was empty. So, well, we, you know, we kind of we, we kind of went over that our last show. Chris, yeah, we, I'm not we, getting all we, we got a little we got a little uh, we got a little salty. We got a little salty with bass. Over yeah. that whole thing. You don't yeah. say. Yeah. yeah. And tournaments overall. But that's exactly what happened. The top half of the lake. So you had the dam up there running all but everything it could run. And then you had the dam down there pulling all but everything it could pull. And they were about equal coming in and going out, but about halfway down this lake, there's a little bottleneck called the Mississippi Bend. And it the lake's like 600 feet wide there. So all this water was hitting this bottleneck and doing a back eddy and going back up the river. So you just had this natural barrier that just the upper end of the lake was four and a half feet high. And from the Mississippi down, the bend down, it was four and a half feet low. And what I saw was people adapting to the lower water rising and the higher water dropping mm -hmm. all every minute of every day. And as the, at, and, and championship Monday, they had it under control and it was even flow and then no flow. And then they fired up and ran down the lake where there was flow. Wow. So this was a pretty cool derby. It was, uh, you know, and, and you saw, um, um, you know, G-Man, because he was on uh, all, all, every day. Um, and, and some of these guys were fishing that shallow grass. But that was water willow. That was out of the water, well, what, basically, wasn't, wasn't it? You could look at the second place finisher, who was Paul Mueller. And if you notice the first few days, he was fishing an offshore piece of structure. One of the only guys doing that. One of the right. only guys doing right. that. And the, the water fluctuation, like George just mentioned, is what basically wiped those fish out. So he had to go to the riprap. And yeah. he ended up fishing new water and and, yeah. and catching those fish much differently. That was a great that was a great uh, overcome for him. Yeah, that he's smart. Well, I, I got to just a smart fisherman. I got to just say something because one of the things that that amazed me about seeing what those guys did was we've all swam a jig, right? But if you watched Gerald Swindle and, and watched any of the clips, how slow he was swimming that jig in that shallow grass. To the point where a lot of the times when those fish ate it, it was literally the jig was on the surface. And it was more of a, a very slow kind of crawl up and down motion. And how about that Alabama shake? Always got him. So your, your hand is basically vibrating the whole time. But but crazy. It, how slow they were swimming it was was one thing that I just uh, it's it's stuck in my head. So yeah. the next time I swim a jig, I'm you know, you're always gonna be thinking, maybe <laughs> yeah. maybe I gotta slow well, it down. Yeah. And to your point, well, um, give me a quarter ounce. Yeah. A lot of the times when they were swimming a jig, I I was gonna say I thought they were fishing maybe a horny toad or a buzz bait because the dead gum jig was laying on top of the water and they were just hovering that thing and yeah. shaking it and they all fished white. It was a big morning shad yeah. spawn all over the lake. Yeah. And they all fished white and they all, and, and they all fished the, uh, I wrote this down here. Um, well, Logan, the last day was, they love that Z crawl. No doubt. But Logan, the last day went, Logan went to a black and blue the last day to catch him. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, that proves a lot there that uh, maybe white's <laughs> not the only color that the lead turn shad spawn. Well, I mean, well, he but, won. But, but yeah, but what was he fishing the same water the whole time? I don't think so. No. so he was a local, so he ran a lot yeah, of water. Yeah, and I think he went to the black and blue when he went up, went up into that dirty, dirty water. water. Yeah, he switched up to that, which that's what I would have done. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, Mike, yeah, that's, that's what you a, got two trophies, man. No, that's what we do. I mean, we, you know, in a river, you know, we're, yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're always fighting with dirty water, high rising, low rising, and all that kind of stuff. Well, this and those was guys exactly did great. That. Yeah, and, and and what I really liked about that shallow weed pattern is because. That, that was that, you know, the water went up. The fish go up with the water. Yep. We, we talk about this all the time here in the shop. Yep. So follow the fish up. He thought it was a buzz bait too. James Hawk said, I thought it was a buzz bait too. I, I couldn't figure out. Uh, the swim wasn't jig. Well, well, no, he fished a swim jig a lot. Last day, especially. Uh, it's, uh, top was 10 jig. is the swim jig. He yeah. still threw the buzz bait. Don't yeah. get, he definitely but did. The swim jig was on the surface. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think what, what uh, James is saying is, is yeah, I think it was a, Buzz bait for like the first part of it, but he was mixing that. No, James is right. It was he was mixing them both in. He was yeah. mixing them right. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, um, that that trans that 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 movement is something that I know that here at our shop we talk about all the time. That water goes up, you follow the fish up, but as soon as it goes down inches, those fish like uh, this. Okay, we're not. I'm not getting stuck up here, man. And they they bolt. Yeah, especially these fish because. A lot of these yeah. fish were done spawning. Yeah. Now they weren't. They want to hang around. Some, that were, some were pre spawn Some were spawning, but a lot of them were done spawning. They are not going to put up. We fish, you know, where we live. We're not that far from Kerr Reservoir, and Kerr yeah. Reservoir goes up and down like yeah. a yo-yo. And on Kerr Reservoir, when it goes up, you don't do anything but go into the bushes. Yeah. But as soon as you see the water on the gum trees going down, head out on the points. Get out. <laughs> get on the point. Amen. And if it's post spawn, pick up a top water and get you a little wind blowing on your point, and you're going to catch them. Like, I got to tell you. Great. I got to tell you, Chris. I, I'm really happy for the guy that won a tournament. Wes Logan. But I was rooting hard for the G Man. I know. I, I thought this was, you know, he never won one of these things. Did you see he was he was giddy too, you know, when he was because you knew he was uh, having a good time and uh, he was having a good time. He was fishing, yeah. he was catching his fish. And I was yeah. one of many, many, many millions of people that wanted him to freaking win that tournament. Millions? Be millions. <laughs> that's how big that that's how that's hey, it. hey, let's let's give some props to to Wes Logan here because remember, G I, G Man's two time angler of the year. I got it. I got you. I, he's uh, he's caught plenty. I got you. I was hoping Brian. Knew I'm, to make I'm a big all, I, I, too, I, I, man. Listen, I That's said trip. Yeah, Brian knew. I mean, all them guys. Yeah. I'm not saying anything, you know, like that. He I'm just, just never saying, won an elite series tournament. I'll and say this. I'll say this. The best thing that I saw. You only come close every so often. The the best thing that I saw was when Wes Logan won. What Gerald <laughs> Swindle did. Oh yeah. Go up on stage, gave him a great big hug. Oh yeah. That, Class act. that, that was it right there. That Dude, that told you. That's what he that. does. He does it all the time. He has no bad ill feelings towards anybody. He Of course not. When he gets his ass whooped, he realizes it and he accepts it. <laughs> you take, and, and he talks take about your it. And he talks and, about and it all the time and it's and it's hey, like, you know, I got my ass whooped today and, and that's the way it is. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. It's I nothing wrong it. with that. I love it. It's not the, not at that level. You got to learn learn from that, right? And and hopefully make the right adjustments. It, it, I just thought that whole it. story, this whole storyline, man, with him, you know, not winning one and getting so close was, and we were all rooting for him. And he's just a really great, nice, likable guy. And not saying anything about uh, Wes Logan, but he just hadn't earned his wings yet. You know what I mean? He's a rookie, and he's a rookie. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I'd say G Man might. Is this a rookie good year? Is this a rookie year? Brian New won one, and this Wes yeah. Logan guy won one. Is Wes Logan a, a rookie this I'm year? I'm not sure if this is his first or his second. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. Yeah. He's a semi-rookie. Semi. We don't know. He's definitely a newer guy. So. Somebody will chime in here and tell us. So the interesting thing about this tournament was, I think it really translates to where we live in the Northeast. Really uh, does. I think it translates to tidal water fisheries. I think it translates to a lot of our reservoirs that are river-run reservoirs. I mean, this was a power fishing clinic you saw the swim jig in play heavily because there was a shad spawn mm -hmm. you saw um a spinnerbait in play because the water was dirty mm -hmm. 
you saw a chatterbait in play because the water was high and off color mm -hmm. and there was a shad spawn. You saw square bells. Yeah. I mean, name your name your shallow water tools here. Very few flipped. What did GDP? What was GDP doing? <clears throat> flipping. Flipping. And he was catching them. Um, <coughs> he had a good day. He had two good days. He finished. Mm -hmm. He fished day three. Um, I actually had a chance to talk to GDP. Um, he set the hook on a big fish on day three on a on his jig and his hook broke in half like he didn't lose him yeah it was just the a hook broke in half that's he reeled in his jig and there was no hook on it that's unfortunate small so, I mean, percentage there that that that's, happens that's, yeah. i mean what are you gonna yeah. do there and he of course also, it happens in one of the biggest tournaments of your life yeah exactly. and he yeah. also lost a couple fish but yeah. i mean they all lost a couple fish we saw west logan lose a big fish <laughs> but i mean greg lost a couple fish his hook broke but he finished he fished day three yeah he had a nice finish he moved way up into points he got some really important points absolutely going to the classic yeah, yeah he needs he needs he needs those points to make the classic cut yeah and i mean you make day three yeah pretty good and uh let's Tough just to, let's just say uh if greg de palma's watching right now uh go get him tomorrow brother he in the hunt he in the hunt on the james yeah he had Black, uh 16 16 pounds. one yeah. man Oh. Greg, uh, Greg weighed in at Neely Henry. Damn. Um, and five minutes after we watched him weigh in, because we were uh, Corbin and I were watching the weigh in. Five minutes after yep. we watched him weigh in, he was in his truck driving to the James. He called us up and he said, you know, blah 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 blah, yada 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 yada. Where are you at? Oh, I'm on my way to the James. <laughs> I'll get there at two thirty. I'm gonna start practice tomorrow. Yep. Go get him, son. That's, Go get him. That's the life of a bass pro, right? <laughs> I know. I know. And guess what? As soon as this tournament's over. He jumps in the truck after weigh in and he drives to Gunnersville to get ready for the first day of pre fishing yeah. for Gunnersville. So, yeah. so you could definitely. So, you want to be a Bass Pro, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, we should write a song about it. You want to be a Bass Pro, baby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know the guy to sing it. <laughs> freestyling on the fly. I, <laughs> and I think the only guy that was flipping on the last day was uh, Jason Christie. Imagine yeah, Jason that. Christie oh, was flipping yeah. a creature bait. We saw we saw some guys flipping some jigs. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, our winner occasionally flipped a jig. True story. Yeah. Uh, G, uh, G, G Money was flipping a jig, mm -hmm. especially when he'd miss a fish. He'd go back through that area and flip a jig. And he was Look, he was loving that you trailer. Know, and Paul Mueller actually threw a shaky head on that high spot. If you looked early, Oh, really? Shaky head was a big component of his weight the wow. first first couple of days as well. Uh, also, wow. um, there was another one of the pros that finished in the top 10 that that threw a shake. Uh, the Austin Felix. Yeah, he threw a shaky head with a four inch Yamamoto Sanko. He was throwing a Picasso, which I thought was odd because that Picasso with that little light spring, mm -hmm. that little tungsten spring that yeah. rips, that, rip, rips out of that Sanko so easy. If you go to the bigger diameter spring if you'll remember a few episodes ago like uh a year ago <laughs> the shaky head show pete gluzik taught us about using the bigger diameter spring like you'll find on the big bite shaky head mm -hmm. to hold the sanko because mm. the sanko's not as durable yeah can i date myself a little bit here with this shaky head talk yeah oh yeah i mean you know you're all right I mean, bro i thought you were married but if you want george to date is, yourself hey, go ahead george, man i mean i might george step is, away for a minute I, but george is older <laughs> than freaking dirt you're all right bro I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not a spring shaky head head Me neither. guy like i use Me i'm neither. gonna use a traditional ball head with a, a a standard keeper and i want that worm <laughs> to have more of an angle with the tail up so i use a, a gamagatsu 111 in my head and i i, I uh, quite honestly, you wreck a lot more worms, but I feel that in a shaky head application, having that worm standing up standing more up. is a better. A better I'm going to even predate you. Oh, SFT ball head. Uh, George? No, no, I go no. back to the days no, of no, Fred, no. Fred taco bland. Hey, now hang oh. on. I got a story about this too. When you're done, <laughs> I go back to the days of Fred taco bland, uh, who, in my opinion, invented the shaky head. He, I'm not going to argue that he may or may not have. And that's to be debatable. Spot sticker might chime in here or something, but you know, slow your roll, boys. Fred Taco Bland. <laughs> I think 
pretty much right. invented the shaky head, and he was like just cashing checks. And I'm like, I need to figure out what a shaky yeah. head is. And then when I found out it was a friggin' ball head jig with a worm on it, I'm like, yeah. yo. We've been doing that for freaking 10 years. <laughs> okay. Everybody did it. They it was called a jig and worm, and no, you no, threaded it, it on the hook, right? It was, you called, didn't... it was called a slider. No doubt. Well, slider oh. was one of the first okay. ones. They were one of the first ones. It was a slider head. So I've got a, a Taco Bland story, ah. too. And, and, and guys may, a lot of the older guys may know this, and they may not. But um, one of the first Bassmaster tournaments that I ever fished was on uh, Lake Martin in Alabama. Um, and... Can I interrupt for a second? Please. Now, do. you fished the top 150 trail, did you not? Uh, I did not. So I, I actually fished the Bassmaster Tour, which was or is the Elite Series, just with a different name. I thought that was I thought that was the top 150. So was it went that, top 150, then Tour. After. Top 150 was before, before. that. Yes. That's what you so fished. you fished it for a few years. Yeah. Uh, I Believe it or not, I, I qualified in for, for the 05 season. I only fished it for one year as a rookie. Um, I did re-qualify, uh, but that year they changed – um, from the Bassmaster Tour to the Elite Series. Okay. And that Elite Series inaugural season was 11 tournaments. Um, first two were back-to-back -back in California. Yeah. So wow. I, I I didn't have the money. No. I, yeah. I, I had... I had the points, yeah, um, and uh, I, yeah. I, you know, kind of earned my way, but I, yeah. I, so I got out of it. Um, I actually missed the classic that year too because the rule changed with the opens where I finished second in the points. Well, I mean, it turned out okay. I'm not complaining. I mean. See, for those of you that don't know, we know Chris from not only from his tournament fishing tournament. days, but we know Chris from when he rode the Shimano Experience yes. trucks around the country. Yeah. Doing events. That's how we met Chris. Chris was in charge of the 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 Shimano like the first and second Shimano year, Experience team, it was called. Ex yeah. Shimano Experience team. Yeah. And uh that's how we met Chris, and that's how we uh, we actually learned quite a bit about not only product, but some techniques from that. We learned about it. Um, and let me let me interrupt and finish my taco yeah, story. Please, oh, yeah. please, please, so please, please, please. We're fishing Lake Martin in Alabama, and uh, there was a guy who was from Massachusetts back in the day that you may many of you guys may know. His name is Danny Korea. Danny Korea, man. So know him well. Danny Korea ended up winning that tournament, but Danny gave the assist to Taco because they got paired, and this is back when you got paired pro to pro, right? So Taco taught Danny a little something called a drop shot. Uh-oh. What? And Danny. Wait a second. And Danny. That's fighting words there. Danny ended up winning the tournament doing that. Really? On Lake Martin from his. And that. Really? That's a true story. What year yeah. was that? 2000. No. 2004. No. 90s. Might be 99, but it's right around the 2000s. And. Yeah. and Really? It's escaping me at the moment, but really? it might have been 01. I think I think it's 2001 because um the year that I qualified for the tour was 03. Man, oh man, that's 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 crazy. That's Danny awesome. Korea from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Danny Korea is was uh, a great fisherman, great, great. guy. Uh, finished second in a classic as well. Yeah, um, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, and you know, but that's a great story. Uh, yeah. And that's yeah. what kind of guy mm. Taco Mm. Yeah. and sharing the wealth there yeah. Yeah. of knowledge and uh fred taco bland rest in peace brother yeah amen so wow. uh another couple little tidbits on the uh neely henry like things that we learned um the frog now keep in mind some of these fish were still spawning some of them were pre-spawn. A lot of them were post-spawn. So high water, flooded bank grass, which we like to call water willow, which is what they were fishing. You know, don't wait till the dog days of summer and the hot the hot weather and the beautiful milfoil beds to get that frog out. These guys were fishing that frog on grass. They were fishing that frog on cut banks. And the other thing that they were throwing on these fish was a spook. And they weren't throwing little spooks, you know. A lot of times in the store here, we have a lot of people ask us about walking baits, and they all gravitate towards, many, many, many people gravitate towards Super Spook Jr. and whatnot. Listen, if you watch this tournament, these guys were throwing, you know, full-size Super Spook and other baits that are like that. So, like, 
110 to 128 millimeter baits, big walking baits, and they were catching a ton of short fish. So, you know, yep. one of the things that I would like to challenge everybody to is step up your confidence level a little bit from learning from this tournament and go to that bigger walking bait. So right now, it's it's time. Those Zoom, are, Zoom, or, uh, those are a couple uh, lessons I'm, that I kind of sucked up I, out of this I, thing. I'll what's your, what's your favorite? What's your favorite walking bait, Corbin? Oh, I'll have seven tied on for Saturday morning. I'm gonna have <laughs> I'm gonna have the pink one. Seven. <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> you told me to challenge myself, bro. I mean, I'm gonna have Sammy's. I'm gonna have. What is wrong with this guy? I'm, I'm gonna have the evergreen shower blow. What? I'm gonna have the OG spook. I'm gonna have the saltwater spook. I'm gonna have the jackal bowfin or whatever it was called. It's discontinued bow stick. I'm gonna have the uh, mega bass dynamite diamante. I'm gonna have doggy feather. I mean, I'm I'm in, dude. Jeez. George just challenged me, dude. I mean. It's, it's well, wonderful. we really wanted to know what the one was that you liked. But. Well, I mean, you challenged me, bro. <laughs> Since you're tying the whole Plano 3700 hey, hey, hey. on. Wait Listen. a minute. How, how about a Shimano Colt Sniper Walk 130? Whoa. Hold up. Wait a minute. I think we about to get some knowledge dropped up. Whoa. In it. Hit it with me. It's not just for saltwater. Oh. Tell me about it. I mean, this may be my walking bait for Saturday. So, so we make um, a, a line of, of lures that are basically revered by saltwater anglers, right? But Plenty of them. Yeah, we just say revered. I did. I can yeah. tell you're from Connecticut, yeah. man. I mean, oh, yeah. only only people from Connecticut would use the word revered. <laughs> <laughs> Into the harbor, baby. There goes the tea. Sorry, Come did, on, I, buddy. did I get a little over your head there, Corbin? I mean, Are you gonna yeah, be all right? Bro, you know me. I, I mean, I'm 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 revered from you, man. I mean, well, listen. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Stay focused. Stay hold focused. On, hold on. So the Colt Sniper Walk 130 has a high pitch rattle in it okay. it's basically designed for for redfish for striped bass yeah um but shh, it crosses really well and in, into freshwater fishing oh no aisle number one left side you'll find them <laughs> um, your other shimano baits so what's your walking bait george choice like go down with the ship i can only have one left in my whole entire <laughs> box forever yeah you're your you're go-to <laughs> Is, is that the way you're going to put it to me, though? Like, I can only have one? No, ever. no, no. I'm on, I'm on Revis Island, and I can only have one? <laughs> if I can only have one, this it's going to be a Patrick, 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 this is what I got to put up with Hedden. every freaking day, man. If I can only have George, one. Can you tell me uh, the price of this uh, uh, Head and Czar spook? Well, let me see, George. Do you want to know? Uh, do you want to know the cost it was last week, or you want to know this week? <laughs> Remember back in 1982 when it was? <laughs> All right, calm down. Come on, bro. If I'm reaching in the box and I'm pulling out a walking bait, I'm pulling out a heading super spook in the silver mullet color, which is their saltwater super spook, silver mullet. I take all the saltwater hooks off. Mm. I put uh, uh, Gami number twos on with a feather on the back. Mm. And I'll tell you what, mm. I can go from Lake Champlain to anywhere in between. Mm hmm slinging that thing and i'm gonna get it bit. works you, you works know it's everywhere you know what's great about a spook and and you know it's one of those baits that that has stood the test of time right i can remember back in the day when i first started fishing in the 90s you know drilling holes in standard standard zero spooks to put rattles in them because they didn't have them ah, back then right yeah. we all did that and then you'd fill the hole yeah. with silicone or whatever yeah. but epoxy the amount of baits that are out there now yeah in comparison, it's ridiculous. But the spook still is there. It is. It yeah. still catches them, and guys still fish with it. And, it is, and that's a great, it's a great, great testament. It's great. It's great. It really is a great bait. What do you, what my my go to? <clears throat> you know, it's a walking bait. Big, go to big walker. Go to stuck on an island. I've changed my. You have to eat. I've changed oh, my you're mind. Sick of coconuts. Wait. I've changed my mind oh, the last boy. couple of years. And there's one bass left in the pond. And I changed my mind the last couple of years because this thing has been really catching yep. some fish. And life changing. That, it's uh, it was pretty much life changing okay. because you know I was a I was a Sammy one hundred junk junk junkie fest. That's where I Me thought too. you were going, yeah. bro. I was a Sammy one hundred junkie fest, but That's then where I thought you were going. But then I threw the shower blow. Admit. Oh. One thirty. One twenty eight. One twenty eight. See, we're oh. we're clouding the walking bait arena with, no, it's with still, a multi-faceted yes bait. yes but it's a walker it still walks but but it does but a, a popper walks too yeah but this thing 
is a walking. Well, yeah, is, the, that's really cloud in the water. Yeah, that's really cloud. <laughs> but in the that's water. what I'm saying. And and the shower blow is kind of in between. Nah, yeah, but, it's more of a walker. That big boy. I mean, we should have some has Van, a little. We should have some Van Halen. Has a little. Water, right? There should be some Van something. Halen banging out right now, man. It's, it's, it's got a little something like, on there, that little body to it, you know, and throw yeah. some stuff around. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get it. Yeah. He, he, he get, get, know, you work get it, Bobby. Work it. getting his shower blow on, baby. <laughs> All right. You get the shower blow going. <laughs> All right. I'm revered. All right. We're no, good. no, we're seriously. Good, good. Seriously, that bait is kick ass. I got one more. I got one more major tidbit on tournament talk and then we're going to roll on yeah we're out james river bass open going on right now as you may have heard our boy gdp is Got a big up, old back. up in it with 16 and change 16 yeah. probably going to win the thing and go on to the classic but mm -hmm. that's that's neither here nor there mm -hmm. yeah, the more on. important thing at this tournament <laughs> in the go. top 10 here we go the fuel i may <laughs> have found the greatest bass <laughs> fishing name of all time <laughs> And my man was in the top 10 earlier today. And I want to put a major shout out to Spike Stoker. I mean, son of a bitch. If that ain't a freaking bass fishing name. I mean, and now weighing in on championship Saturday, Spike Stoker. <laughs> Woo! He could be a double agent and and drive <laughs> yeah. drive a NASCAR like now driving the number nine Spike. Well, you got, what, what everybody's got to understand is George is George is always looking for the perfect name for the perfect job. Yes, yeah, he is. I mean, you know, he's always talking about uh, sports casting, sports yep. casting, and and on the news. Uh, so if I was a sports caster on a major broadcast, you know, a major network, NBC, you know, like with Les Williams or whatever his name is, Lester, Holt. Lester Holt, Les Williams, you know, <laughs> now the sports with Dick Hammer. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. I mean, everybody's going to be like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give you the line on the Eagles game. I'm going to tell you why the Giants suck. I mean, we're going to talk some hockey, Yammer Yager. I mean, it's all going down. You're listening. But now we got Spike Stoker. Spike Stoker. Oh, the other famous. thing I wanted to throw in about the James gentleman. The guest and shortage? this is that now mm -hmm. listen we're not going political on this show i was only just saying i i want to tell you all in this listening area here well the listening area is kind of big but if you live in this geographical area a great trip is to james river and the chickamahominy chickahominy creek and all that other Good they trip. got beautiful now let me tell you why you got some big fish in there yes this river has been brought back and stocked Craziness. over the years, over the decades, but with Florida hybrids. Crazy yep. fish, man. There is seven to nines. All over the place. Yeah. Catch so them, catch them on every other cast. Maybe, maybe look at the James or maybe maybe basin out of the chick. Uh that's the locals call the chick a how many yeah. the chick. And and the and the other nice thing about you know, you can take family down there because it's a lot of history. Yeah, you got the history. Yeah. You got your so, your and you some of the best some, U.S. history. Yeah. So, Plus, so, you can do some family things. Well, you know? definitely. No, 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 no. I mean, I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. It's a good, great place to drop the wife and kids. Go on, honey. Have a great time learning about the history. Yeah. I'm going to go out and catch 10 pound giants. And and oh, by the way, if you get tired of catching those 10 pounders, you can always go cat fishing. Oh, or, 100 pound blue cat. Oh, oh, oh. One of my favorites is catching American shad. Oh, it's one of the oh. best shad fisheries in the country. Really? Yeah. Damn yeah. it. Love that. So all that's right. all I got for you all tonight on tournament talk. Well, and, we're, uh, we are, I tell you what, segue into a couple more quick things. Here. Oh, yeah. And then we got to get out of here. Okay, yeah. quick. We got plans tonight. We're going quick. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Sorry. One, one more time. One more My time. Bad. A little hiccup in your My bad. Or what? Okay. So what? What do you call this segue, George? Well, what is this? We 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 have because I didn't. I don't know. Anything we all kind of we all kind of picked out a bait or two that we wanted to like maybe like one bait that we wanted to like highlight. Mm. Kind of like just you know. Not really like I don't know how this, this always happens. This is like the greatest part of the show. And we always like 
forget about it. I don't know. Oh, I mean, no, 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 no. We are sidetracked. Well, I can tell you today. We're it going. starts with three letters and a mathematical symbol. N R X plus. <laughs> but that's, that's okay. how it started. But that's yeah. Okay. I mean, this show was was loose, kept with a loose profile intentionally. But we didn't know. We didn't know who was coming. I mean, we kind of all wanted to like maybe pick a bait like. And, and I think we're going to make this a regular segment, but uh, but we have to come up with a really cool name for it. But it's like the bait of the week or something. But like a really cool kind of like bait that caught your eye or that you're playing with, uh, that you're learning, that maybe, you know, you want to share. And I'm going to start it off because I have one here that I've been playing with. And I just haven't had time uh, in our last few podcasts because we've had a lot going on. But I want to talk to you about a Ned bait. You know, we're, we're all Ned fishing all the time, finesse fishing, mostly out of circumstances. But what I got here, Nick, is... Is that the, is that the creature? Help, help me hold one of them up. I got one. it. I got it, bro. The, no, what no. Is, this what, is what a, is that thing? This is a Strike King. Um, and Strike King got into to the Ned business pretty hardcore the last couple of years. But this one here, Nick, is the um, Rage Ned Crawl. Oh. So they took the Rage Crawl and they shrank it. Yeah. Honey, I shrank the Rage Crawl. Also doubles as a fantastic yeah, finesse jig trailer. Oh. Not that I've ever done that. Heard, heard from up north oh. here. So up here on this Connecticut waterways, they use this as a jig trailer when they're fishing for smallies. But it's also, you can fish it on your Ned. You can fish it on your Ned uh, TRD heads from whoever your favorite Ned TRD uh, head maker is. We like the Z-Mans quite a bit, obviously. But And, and, it, and it, has to, the, it has the Rage Claws, which which the Rage Bug every, or the Rage um, uh, Crawl that everybody loves. Flippy as, floppy. Yeah, whatever. It, it's it's on this one too. Shrunk. It's, they just shrunk it. It's awesome, honey. So I awesome. shrunk the rage crawl. That's where they, I'm at today. They did a great job. That's with that. where I'm at today. Next. Yep. yep. Good job. What Corbin, about, what, you? What, what about what, you, Corbin? What are you oh. doing? Why? Hey, Corbin, pick one for you. I see you got 18 tackle boxes laying up there. <laughs> Can you just pick one? <laughs> well, so for me, <clears throat> you know, you're always on this chatter wagon train, George, and we're always talking about the jackhammer. Love and, it. You know, we're, you know, there's just some things that this time of year, I don't care where you at, you got to have a chatterbait tied on, man. And, you know, the worst part about it is when you reach into rod locker in the morning and you look down there and you're like, my God, I got to change my swim bait because it rusted through. It's falling apart because it's, it's so salty, et cetera. Because, I mean, majority of people don't get to fish every day of the week, you know. So you look down there and you're like, oh, man, I wish I could find a way to keep this from happening. Well, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to drop some knowledge on you. Okay. Oh boy. Here we so go. everybody's using the jackhammer, right? Everybody's using the jackhammer. Don't sleep on the Project Z. All right. Now, why not to sleep on the Project Z? Still got pretty good HD definition. Get, get some gold blade. You still get the black blade. You can slide the skirt right off. But when it comes to the trailer, diesel minnow. Diesel minnow. And the reason being... I'm in week three of fishing high, dirty water. I still got the same chatterbait and the same trailer. Mm. And uh, just saying, I, I took that thing, put it in the rod locker, went and ate chicken wings the other day. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm going to pull it out this Saturday when I launch my boat. I mean, this is before the chicken wing shortage. Now it's gotten worse. So <laughs> I was going to say, where'd you get them <laughs> wings yeah. at? But, you yeah. know, then I made a ribeye on Saturday. And I mean, after this weekend, who knows what I'm going to do? I mean, I might. You're eating good, clearly. <laughs> oh, I know, man. I mean, I've been trying to, you know work on my figure but uh hot dogs maybe this weekend because that's all that's left i might have to go with rice <laughs> uh but yeah i mean you guys don't sleep on the diesel metal they make it in uh four and five inch so if you want a bigger profile bigger boot foot trailer you can always cut an you know half inch inch off of it I, and, and i got a lot of i water. gotta bust in here a second oh, oh man because oh. i want to know Beeler, what are you throwing right now oh what I is knew, the hot I, I knew this was coming i gotta know bro because he's he, not gonna tell you he you know, this guy, a lot of people don't know, but Chris is a hammer. Hey, he's yeah. not going to tell you that. And I, I always introduce him like that. Uh, uh, Chris, the hammer, bass hammer, Beeler, because he's a hammer. He catches them big time. And, you know, everywhere, everywhere. 
He's not going to tell you. He goes everywhere and catches them. I mean, but uh, what are you throwing right now? I mean, what's your one bait right now that you would say to the customers go to Susquehanna Fish and Tackle and buy this? So, because I think it's probably something we don't have in stock. So, I just got done fishing a, a tournament on Winnipesaukee. Oh, here we go. And uh, before that, I was on Candlewood. And mm. oh, Candlewood. Candlewood right now is, is now full blown spawn. Oh. So, obviously, there's still some pre spawn fish and there's some post spawn fish, but. Um, on Candlewood, it's really difficult to beat, in my opinion, a, a Jackal 110 MR um, re-range. It, it's that's a, a, a new, that's a jerk bait heaven. Up it's there. a new yeah. jerk bait that we came out with. A lot of guys fish different w ways at Candlewood. You can do, you know, a, a light jig. You can catch them on a, a, a swim bait, like a Kitek or something like that. But I'm a jerk bait mm. junkie, mm. and mm. that bait is just. It's that good. It, it, I mean, it's it's the perfect depth. Um, it does everything mm -hmm. you tell it to do. Mm -hmm. um, it suspends perfectly. It's got great hooks on it. We love the re-range. Great colors. Yep. Um, but we actually went to Winnie, and, uh, you know, the water temp was 47. Mm. Jeez. So that's pretty chilly. That's cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dang. And up there, if you're a, a local guy, you you go in the backwaters, and you try and catch four largemouths because limits four in New Hampshire. And uh, it's tough to go there and compete against those guys and catch for a large mouth. So while you do it, and, and we did it to try and catch some, um, I never really got much going in practice. So um, You're probably dead stick at anymore up there. Yeah, definitely dead stick. For big smallies. But yeah. the bizarre part about Winnipesaukee, um, and I'm going to pay some some um, respect to Kitek because we caught uh, the majority of our smallies on a 4.8 Kitek on a half ounce football head. Wow, 4.8. Wow. Mm -hmm. it, because up there, there's so many fish. 4.8. So many fish that you just weed through pound and a half, pound and three quarter, two pounders. How is it possible that that lake that gets that insane amount of fishing pressure has that many fish can continuously be just because it's only fished like three awesome. months a year. Chocked full of them. I mean, it's, it's only fish three months a year. Just Frozen to give you an example. Yeah, it's freezing ass cold up there it's all the time. A, it's a team tournament trail, so I fish with my my 84-year-old dad. We're still fishing. Oh, nice. Uh, love yeah. it. Nice. Love it. So um, That's awesome. To start the tournament, I didn't even – I had to put my rod down because my dad caught seven fish and seven casts, and I had to sit there and call while – He's catching these fish cast after cast after wow. cast after cast. Go so get it, Dad. We must have caught. I mean, we all like to exaggerate how many fish we caught, but we caught 50 plus fish during oh. the course of the day. Wow. And there was a clear difference in getting better bites with that bigger swim bait. So, yeah. um, That's awesome. Stuck so if, 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 how'd you do it? How'd you end up? Oh, terrible. We, yeah. we had four fish for 11 pounds and basically up there with that puts you at about I don't know, 18th or something like that. Anyway. Really? Yeah. So let me so, ask you wow. this question. Um, I know Nick's fished uh, Candlewood. Uh, have you ever fished Winnipesaukee? Okay, so, you know, people from our area here, we're, yeah. you know, Susquehanna Fishing Tackle Worldwide Headquarters, you know, located in Columbia, PA, uh, and around this area here. If we were going to go up to fish one of these great lakes that we keep hearing about, would, it, would, would you tell us to go to Winnipesaukee or would you tell us to go to Candlewood? So we in, can only pick one. I think in, in my opinion, Candlewood is probably the most underrated fishery in the Northeast. I thought it was having problems. No, it's, it's pretty lights out. Um, really? Yeah. Historically in the springtime, it takes, uh, it takes big weight, five pound average to win. Um, the last fat bass nation tournament, a gentleman by the name of Chris Panetta won, and he had 24 and change for five God. and that's a mixed bag. Oh. Right. So wow. in the springtime, you can literally go there and catch, you know, a small mouth that's over five on one cast and a large mouth over six on the next yeah. cast. And wow. you liked it, didn't you, Nick? 23 pounds and didn't break top three. Wow. Uh, and, uh, it, two years ago, yeah. Wow. And that's consistent. Right. So it, it's one of those fisheries that um, it's not a big lake. It's only 5,500 acres. It's full of milfoil. But it's got um, it, it's actually flooded towns. It's five flooded towns, and there's tons of man-made cover okay. structure. George, you better get that right. There's tons roadbeds, rock walls. What's um, the average depth? 
The deepest part of the lake is about 125 feet. And does it get rough? I mean, like for me no. with a jet boat, no. I could take, oh, no, you, man, could, I, you could kayak me and ben, it. Me and Ben Buckhart are going to take a road trip. No, in, in the summertime, it's it's got a ton of boat traffic like every you know major lake does. Remember, it's, yeah. it's only about 40 minutes from New York City. Yeah, right. Oh, right. Well, in that case, but it's it is a fantastic it's got a speed limit. Chris, we have some. It's great, got a real. It got a real speed. We limit. have some great people chiming in on this on this yeah. topic. We have, we have Rob Osman, Oz, Oz, and he's all Candlewood. He's Candlewood up. Yep. Um, we have uh, William Clute. You know where <laughs> he wants to fish, up at Fantasy Island, the Res, the Res. Uh, you know that doesn't count. That does it. Uh, I mean, you got phenomenal. We would all love to come up there and fish with you. But first of all, you're booked up solid until 2091. <laughs> and, you know, it's just it, it's not right. You know, you, I mean, you, you just crush them all day long. Uh, your worst day is better than our best day. Yeah. Uh, we also save, have. Save uh, us a date, though, Bill. Mike, we also have Adrian Boxley checking in. Adrian. Uh, Pastor Adrian is a really good friend of ours, and uh, we just want to reach out real quick and just wish him a great day. He's a, Adrian's he, a great guy. Yes, he he's is. he's a he's a great he's a great guy, yep. and uh, yep. he he keeps us on a straight and narrow. And whenever yes. we catch a snakehead or whenever we catch a, a rockfish, a, a flathead, flathead, or yep. a big flathead, we bring it to Adrian, and he cooks it up, and we eat the hell out of it. We, he, <laughs> I mean, you might, like, you might not want to say wrong that. with that. That freaking yeah. guy knows how he to makes a yeah. mean fish fry. Yes, he Let me does. tell you that. Yes, I'm does. telling you right now, man, there ain't nothing like that. <laughs> so, oh, I know you'd make room for us there, Mr. Clute, but you know what? Yep. You're too busy, brother. <laughs> Yep. Save us a date in the fall. We'll come up there and yeah. wreck them. Well, we'll we might come up yeah. in the fall. I tell you what, we're gonna do. We're gonna bring. We're gonna bring Patrick. Patrick, right over here. Come here, Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. Come on over here, Patrick. Yeah. Get Patrick in the frame yeah. here. Now let me introduce everybody. This this guy. This right here. guy right here. <laughs> this is this is the man, the myth, the legend. This is the guy who. I don't know if he started. He started all. He what? started it all. What with us? With us? Yeah. Pretty darn Listen, close. Pretty damn close. He oh, yeah. he's, he, an A1, he's an A one from day one. He changed everything for us. <laughs> and uh Patrick is a is is our is our Shimano rep and along with other other companies, but he's our Shimano rep. And he's more than that, he's a he's a he's a great friend and he he really helps us out a lot uh, you know over the years. He really helps us with understanding tackle and everything. But Appreciate that, Mike. he sucks <laughs> because I'm on his <laughs> freaking <laughs> He, he, fantasy you, you fishing suck. takes our money in fantasy yeah. football every year. I'm on his, I'm on his fantasy fishing freaking uh, football. 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 Crazy football. It's a stealing event. He steals <laughs> money from us money every memories. week. Steals all of us guys. We all just give it to him. So at the beginning of this year, I'm just going to give him a hundred bucks and I'm going to say, all right, dude, you know what? I, to, I don't even want to play. Just put a team in for me. Whatever. Save me 17 weeks of aggravation. Yeah. It's, it's crazy with the bye week. So, uh, but that's the kind of camaraderie we have. We have, uh, uh Chris is in it, uh, um, um, also, and we're all kind of in it together and, and we, that's how we kind of uh, get through the winter. We have a great time with that, but Patrick is kind of the guy to do that. But, uh, I wanted to bring him on here. If, um, um, you know, and he just really, really helps us out. He's very smart with it. And you guys, I know you guys know him because he's always here at all of our events. Yes, he is. Every event. Yep. You know, so hardest work and rep in the industry. I'm telling oh, you, that's very he's our, he's our man. You, hey, now. <laughs> so anyway, we just wanted to say thank you so much to Patrick for coming today. And, uh, I got one more Patrick, question. Patrick, what's yes, your, sir. what's your hot bait? My hot bait, my favorite bait, your favorite bait. And I, and I, Corbin, what? I'll Corbin. You I'll better you answer that. My favorite bait. No, no, no. Oh, oh, so oh, 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 my boy oh, Patrick's yeah. a bit of a stick. Uh, yeah, I, I know I, that. I, yeah, he is a stick. I mean, he is. No, don't answer it. I want him to answer it because there's two baits that I have in mind. Hold on, let me go see if they're over there in stock. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> they are one. over there in stock. I've been known to throw a jackal pompadour. Uh, that's Pom what I knew. I knew he was going to say, say that. <laughs> when he caught that five pound smallmouth on that that bait, he's like, I knew that was was going to be. Yep. Patrick is. I, you know, the other one I thought you were going to say, too, that you turned George on to and you whacked him with George at one time in Dirty Water was the Rapala x Rap uh, Shad. 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 Frank Bait. In that um, stupid uh, oh, hot, hot, steel hot steel color. Steel. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, dumbass yeah. hot steel color. <laughs> did you ever catch a fish on that color? I never yeah. did. 
Oh, I don't think I ever. These boys around one. here, they throw them like it's 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 like yeah, it's man. the greatest thing the in the sh- world. The Schindler special, man. Yeah. That's what's great about fishing. Yeah. yeah. Can't catch nothing on it. Schindler, you're a so- lion son of a. <laughs> Oh, Mike, I saw you catch one. Remember, we slid the plug, plug knocker 60 yards down river because we didn't want to move our spot. We That's catch true. Them on I did catch one on that. But I got, I got a question here for um, a guy by the name of Chris Beeler. Something about this color, CB All Wife and the Crosstail Shad. I mean, how did you get a color designed? I mean, like, just just kind of, I mean, we Patrick likes the, the pompadour, but I mean, CB All Wife, I mean, that's like... Just, just kind of, I mean, oops. No, oops. so so back in the day, um, we had a, a gentleman that worked for Shimano. His name was Ted Sakai, and he was uh, on a part of our product team. And um, we don't own Jackal. Shimano doesn't own Jackal. We handle the U.S. distribution of Jackal. And we were looking at expanding colors to be more successful in the U.S. with specific soft oh, plastics, yeah. right? Okay. So... The Canadian sales office, uh, the marketing manager there, his name is Bob Mahoney. Uh, myself, Dan Thorburn, who actually is um, works in our real service department, um, who used to work in SET with me. Um, we sat down with Ted and we kind of brainstormed on on some colors that we thought would be successful in Crosstail Shad. So um, the Melon Copper was one of them. Yep. You notice there's one called BM Shiner. Well, that's Bob Mahoney Shiner. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, there's a cinnamon or an ox, an oxblood rather that yeah. was, uh, Dan, Dan's from California. So that paid, you know, homage, so to speak to the West. They Coast named guys. one after me too, uh, Chris, don't forget green pumpkin. Oh, I thought they named it. I thought they were gonna call you smoke purple, George. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they got another one now. <laughs> and the, the CB ale life was, was my contribution. We, we all kind of picked, um, you know, man, if we could have one bait, what would we do? Right. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and all the the lakes that that we fish in the northeast have alewives or some sort of forage base like that. So yep. yeah. um, that's where the, kind of the that's kind of the story, the the long and short of how where that, where that's, that came from. Yeah. That's cool, Chris. I mean, you knew I had to bring that one out. Sometimes. Oh yeah, that yeah. was I mean, coming that, up for that sure. That was kind of like I mean, I put on my long sleeve hoodie just to kind of you know pull that one out last minute, man. That's also my fantasy football name because someone made me oh, yeah. use that name. Yeah, that, actually, <laughs> that's oh, yeah. right. Oh, we yeah. use that name for you all the time. <laughs> yeah. CBI wife. CBI yep. wife. Changing it in my phone. <laughs> well, yeah, so Mike, uh, thank you so you much, know, everybody, for coming. Bring um, a full circle here. You know, uh, uh, thanks for stepping in. We, I know we put you on the spot. We yeah, were like, we did. Bro, you're happy in. to. Ha- yeah. You guys need something. Yeah. I'm here I know. You. you always yeah. are. I, I, I shouldn't even have thought about a second, second thought about it. I, I, I know. I, I, but- knew, I knew you were going to be there. Patrick Latham. Yes, buddy. We, hey, Thank can you much. give Patrick a round of applause over there? Yeah, like on the circuit oh, board. Yeah, so uh, coming yeah. up, coming up next week. Uh, got a big show for you next week. Got a big show in the house next week. Um, um pre. Pre uh, tournament, pre tournament, the last the last countdown before uh, SummerSlam. SummerSlam. So you got plenty of time to sign up. It's plenty of time. It's going to be big. It's going to be great. It's going to be, be a, fun. A awesome time. We're going to have oh, just we got some swag for we you got, too. By the way, oh, huge. Yeah. These huge. boys from Shimano, they sent us a skid. Yeah. Of now, swag now NRX plus available for entry as well. I know. Oh. I, wish, oh. I wish that I would have known that. I Get your went, NRX. I mean, I'd have saved my buy-in. Man. Now here's the deal: people that are in, or are interested in NRX plus, I, just like everything else that's happening, get it if you want it. Get it now because I'm telling you, they are gonna like a couple days, man. It's gonna be gone. She gone. So, you know, anybody that's looking for that, that talked about it, that thinking about it, knows a buddy that wants it, get on our site right now. Order them right now. They're live, George. They are live. They're live right now. They so are you live. Can, they are going on right now. You can order uh, right now, and we can get, Matt, them, we can get them going for We you. have uh, IT Matt chained to a uh, table in a small office with fluorescent light bulbs and a water <laughs> cooler. That's good. That's good. And uh, he has NRX up. He's also putting up all the new... Uh, G Loomis and Shimano hats and shirts, and they yeah. just went like 
That's a sweet hat. Swag crazy this year with some really, really nice did. stuff. They really did. Which, to be honest with you, maybe not so much in the past. Oh, yeah. But this is a fresh, sweet-looking batch. Uh, so Matt is uh, chained up to his table leg right yep. now, and he's and he's putting that up. He's also loading up all the new Sims, the CX gear. Yep. All the all the all the sweet swag there. The and new, the uh, new Shimano. Did you talk about them? The Shimano and Genomus shirts. I just finished that. Oh, okay. Are you the, paying attention? No, I wasn't. I was reading something. So Mike's not paying attention. So uh, listen, <laughs> that's what's happening here at SFT. We went a little yep. long. Yep. Hit thank the music. Yep. Key the music. Thank you so and we much, gone. guys. And thank you for stopping in for another edition of Tackle, Tackle Shop, Shop Live. We'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, sunny day oh, right there you took my breath away oh, young and pretty was it just a dream the next day you called me up you told me I'm your little buttercup you came over and you fell into my arms well I know what I feel please tell me your love is real you make me smile when I think of you if I am down low and I am blue Soaked in sweat, with chills running down my neck. I'm going crazy from just the thought of you.